will continue with our series of messages regarding Thanksgiving. You remember the title of the message last week? Do you remember? What is it? Oh, you've forgotten already. <laughs> it was regarding Thanksgiving. So remember, it comes in the form of a command. <laughs> the title of our message last week was Be Thankful. Right? Be thankful. Could you say that to the person sitting next to you? Be thankful. Right? And do you remember one constant that we can always be thankful for? Remember what it is? We can always be thankful because of creation. Because of creation. Why? Because creation tells us that there is God. And if there is no God, well, there will be no creation. We won't be here at all. Right? So we have to be thankful for creation because the truth that there is God. And because there is God, there is a God who is all-powerful, who created all of us, who is in control, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But another reason why we need to be thankful or why we should be thankful for creation is because creation gives us purpose for living. My life has purpose and meaning because of creation. If there was no creation, life will have no purpose life will have no meaning. You will just simply be here by accident for no reason at all. My grandson uh, spends the night with us every Friday and he likes to go to Target just to look at toys and then I let him buy some things, you know, a couple <laughs> dollars or something. And then uh, two uh, Fridays ago, he brought his wallet with him. And he said, uh, Lola, I brought some money. I said, oh, good, oh, good. And then uh, I said, why? I said, well, because I'm going to buy something tomorrow at Target. I said, oh, really? And so I told him, I said, well, you know what? We're not going to Target tomorrow. <laughs> and he said to me, do you think that I brought my money for no reason? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, if there was no creation and there is no God who created us, we're here for no reason. Do you think we're here for no reason? No. We're here for a reason. And the reason why we know that is because there is a God who created. Tell the person sitting next to you, you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. All right? You're here for a reason. And so be thankful. <laughs> right? So be thankful. Creation gives our life purpose and meaning. But there is another thing why we should be thankful for. Remember, we're talking about constants. Because our problem, like I said last week, is that we, we, we try to find reasons to be thankful and we start thinking of the things that we have. And if we don't find that there are some things that we have or acquire or possess, we feel like we have no reason to be thankful. But, but the Bible tells us that we are to be thankful always. And the first reason, like I said last week and today, now is because of creation. That's a constant that will never change. So that's why I can always be thankful because of creation, because there's a God who created. But there's another constant. Another constant. And it also is, of course, connected with creation. Why? We can be thankful always, first because, there, because of creation, because God created, but we can also always be thankful because this God who created is a God who remains in control. So the title of our message today is Be Thankful God is in control. Say that to the person sitting next to you. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we'll say it one, uh, one word at a time. Be thankful. God is in control. All right. Okay. That's the message for today. That's a concept. That will never change. Okay? That's a concept. That will never change. God will always be in control. And why should we be thankful about this? Well, the God who created 
who is in control of everything in the universe is a God who is able. Because it's not just a declaration that say, oh, don't worry, everything is under control. We hear that all the time from our government, right? <laughs> but are we comforted? No, <laughs> because we are, there's a lot of things happening that are not under control, right? But when, when God says that he's in control, it's because he is able to be in control. Because the truth is, no matter how hard our government or our dads or our moms or, or the people around us want to be in control, they really can. No human being can absolutely be in control. Even our own lives. Even our own lives. I cannot say that I'm fully in control of my life. I cannot. Do you realize that? Even though myself is the only person I know I can have control of, I'm still not in full control of it. <clears throat> Do you realize that? Like for example, you know what I'd like to be doing while I'm preaching right now? <laughs> that I cannot do? <laughs> Wayne knows. Because, oh, yeah, golfing. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There are things that I cannot be in control of. I cannot be in two places at one time. I, oh, how I wish I could do that all the time. Right? Just bring your golf club. <laughs> <laughs> but I still can't be in two places at one time. I don't have control over that. There are certain things that I do not have control of no matter how hard I want it to be. Why? Because I am a finite human being. <laughs> there are things that I simply will have to accept as is. <coughs> right? Because of my humanity. Now the good thing about the God who created is in control of everything. And he is able to be in control of everything. Not just here in the US, but in other countries, not just in other countries of the world, but even other planets and everything in the universe. Why could he do that? Well, I would like for you to open your Bibles to Job chapter 37. This is what God says about him when Job started questioning him. You know, even though Job was actually a good guy, there was a time in Job's life when he actually started questioning God and his wisdom. And so in chapter 37, God started speaking to Job. And this is what God said to Job. At this my heart pounds and leaps from its place. And then God says, listen, listen to the roar of his voice to the rumbling that comes from his mouth. He unleashes his lightning beneath the whole heaven and sends it to the ends of the earth. That's God doing that, okay? After that comes the sound of his roar. He thunders with his majestic voice. When his voice resounds, he holds nothing back. That's just the thunder. <laughs> That's a, and then he's referring to it as God doing it, okay? God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth. Thank God he hasn't said that yet for the U.S., right? We don't want snow yet. And then, and then he says, and then to the rain shower, be a mighty downpour, so that everyone he has made may know his work. He stops all people from their labor. The animals take cover. They remain in their dance. The tempest comes out from the, its chamber. The cold from the, driving, uh, from the driving winds. The breath of God produces ice and the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through them. And his direction, at his direction, they swirl around over the face of the whole earth to do whatever he 
commands them. He brings the clouds to punish people or to, or, to, or, or to water his earth and show his love. Listen to this, Job. Stop and consider God's wonders. Do you know how God controls the clouds and makes his lightning flash? Do you know how the clouds hang poised those wonders of him who has perfect knowledge? You who swelter in your clothes when the land lies hushed under the south wind, can you join him in spreading out the skies hard as a mirror of, of cast bronze? Tell us what we should say to him. We cannot draw up our case because, our, because of our darkness. Should he be said that I want to speak? Would anyone ask to be swallowed up? Now no one can look at the sun, bright as it is in the skies, after the wind has swept them clean. Out of the north he comes in golden splendor. God comes in awesome majesty. The Almighty is beyond our reach and exalted in power. In his justice and great righteousness he does not oppress. Therefore people revere him. For does he not have regard for, for all the wise in the heart? See, these are just simple things that God said to Job. Do you know what I do? Do you know that I control the thunder? Do you know that I control the lightning? Do you know that I control the rain? Basically, God is telling Job, hey, Job, you know what? I'm the one who's in control of everything. Why? Because he is able why? The scripture tells us that God is almighty. God is almighty. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, it says, For nothing is impossible with God. Anything that we can think of that is impossible with God, it is possible. He is an almighty God. He is mighty in his power. Not only is he almighty with regards to creation or creating things or doing things, but the Bible also tells us that he knows everything. He is all-knowing. He knows the number of hair in our heads. That won't take much for Charlie, but... <laughs> you know, but... <laughs> But, you know, but, you know he, he knows that. He knows the desires of our hearts. He knows what we're thinking even now. He is all-knowing. But not only that, he is all-present. It doesn't matter where you go. The psalmist says, where can I hide from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I go down to the Sheol, you are there. If I hide myself in the wings of darkness, you are there. The psalmist said, where can I hide from your presence? He is all present. He is all knowing. He is all powerful. He is able. So when he says that he is in control, you can believe it. He is in control. And for that simple reason, we need to be thankful. Now, here's another thing that we need to be thankful about the God who is the most powerful, who is in control. And this is called a not necessary attribute for ruling. Okay? It's not necessary that he be this, this, second, this next one that I'm going to talk about. That means he can be God and in control even if he is not this. And you know what that is? This God who is in control is a good God. It's not a necessary character or attribute for ruling. So can you imagine if the God who is in control is a mean God? Imagine that. One day, he takes all the oxygen out. <coughs> and then God says, just kidding. <laughs> can, can you imagine that? 
<laughs> no, he will do that. Why? You know, because he's good. He even makes his rain fall on the good, as the Bible says, and even on the bad. Why? Because he's good. He's a good God. He provides for what we need. But people don't see that as a constant about God. He's in control and he is good. That is why Job, after all these things, he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His nature doesn't change. His character doesn't change. We have a God who is able. We have a God who is good. And the Bible tells us also that this God who is in control is a just God. He is just. He is fair. There are things in life that's not unfair. That's unfair. But God is just. He remains just. We have justices and judges that are not just, but God is just. And for that simple reason, again, that He is the God who is in control, we must be thankful. And lastly, this God who is in control, who is able, who is good, who is just, is a wise God. <laughs> he is a wise God. What does that mean? He will never make a mistake. We should be assured of that, right? That should give us comfort, right? That the God who is in control will never make a mistake. <laughs> Can you say that to the person sitting next to you? God will never make a mistake. So when God created you, He did not make a mistake. Take comfort in that. Tell the person sitting next to you, you're not a mistake after all. <laughs> <laughs> Right? He, he will never make a mistake. Whatever he allows to happen, <clears throat> he has a purpose for it. I know, there are some things that he allows to happen that we don't understand. Right? There are things that he allows to happen that actually sometimes even hurts us. But we can still be thankful. Why? Because whatever he allows to happen, it's not a mistake. Because he is in control. He is in control. Thanksgiving is coming and you're probably counting all the things that you can be thankful for. And for some reason you say, I don't know how I can be thankful. Well, remember, God created you. You should be thankful for that. Remember, God is in control. And he doesn't make a mistake. And that will never change. We can be thankful for that. We may not fully understand a lot of things that are happening. But we have a God who is in control. And we're not saying this just to kind of pep you up as a pep talk. No. This is truth from the scripture. This is truth from the word of God. He remains in control no matter what. And we need to trust him in that. If we do, then we can be thankful. We can be thankful even in the midst of trials, difficulties, and hardships. Because the God who created us is the same God who remains in control of the universe.